split up pads are broken. This video is going to explore a brand new glitch that I found about two days ago, which essentially lets you wrong warp off split up pads. Before we get stuck into anything though, just please be aware this stuff is brand new and I want to get it documented as soon as possible pretty much. We still do not know how this glitch works in full and there could be huge applications or there could be no applications. But this video is going to explore what we know so far about this new wrong warp glitch and how it might be used in the future. So let's look at how split up pads work. You split up and pretty much that sets your warp point so that if you can avoid out in the game, you'll come back to the split up pad. By avoid out, I mean if you clip out of bounds and fall off the map, Banjo will warp back to wherever he originally split up from. So the split up pad right here. Even if you leave the room and go to a different spot or something and you either die or void out, you're still going to get the same effect. No matter where you are, you'll void back to where you had originally split up from. So something like this. Banjo falls off the map. And we void back in here, right where we split up. So pretty much this new glitch that I found happens when you overlap a cutscene with this void out. The cutscene in particular we're going to look at is the Jinjo cutscene, but it also works on Cheeto pages and I would presume also works on a bunch of other stuff. When we grab a Jinjo, what happens is that it sort of shows you Jinjo Village and then pulls you back into the original map that you came from. And if you time it well enough, you can actually void out right before it pulls you to this Jinjo Village map. So let's see what this looks like. So pretty much you could void out. And if you happen to void out right before it fades you in, you might notice on the top left up here, the map will change to Jinjo Village and it plays out the cutscene without seeing it. Now you might be wondering, how do you void out grabbing a Jinjo? Um, you would use a piece of tech called a bit clip and uh, that would allow you to void out and time it well. You can time it pretty much by canceling the Jinjo text box wherever you want. So the whole cutscene plays out and then it's gonna pull you back to uh, the original map. You'll notice when we come back to the original map in a second, it's going to show the map for a brief moment and you will see Banjo for a second, uh, but then Banjo is going to pretty much void out straight away. So back to Pterodactyl land here and you get like one visual frame there. That's it. Banjo voids out. But then inside the mountain we come back to. Oh my goodness, we didn't void out back to the split up pad. We voided out to a completely, completely different warp into the level. It happened to be this warp right here, which is the top of the nest and where well, we just skipped the Terry fight. Now, just to demonstrate that this was indeed a wrong warp, I'll show you what happens again if we normally void out as Banjo. Banjo would just go back to the pads where Banjo met Kazooie from. I'll note that getting the Terry G like this wouldn't be particularly useful in 100% because it doesn't trigger the Terry's eggs thing, so you, you still have to fight Terry in the end. Uh, but for something like a 70 G run, it could actually be a time saver. So to pretty much summarize what this glitch does, if you have a map that has split up pads in it, you should be able to trigger a glitch where you can warp to any door in that map. For example, another really good door to warp to would be this one here in Witchy World. Normally you'd have to open this with the van and then go in and get Mumbo. And then after you get Mumbo, come back to the van. Uh, but if you uh, managed to warp into this door, you would skip that first trip as the van and then you'd only have two trips in total. And probably the hugest potential application would be in Culture and Keep. So you split up as Banjo-Kazooie. And then if you could make your way to another level, then you could void out off a Cheeto page or a Jinjo just before the cutscene starts. Note that bit will likely be either Taz only or need a big setup for the bit clip. You'll see it trying to play the first time Cheeto cutscene in Spiral Mountain, so we'll let that happen. Warps you back to Mayhem Temple. You void out as Kazooie. You walk back to Culture and Keep, but from the wrong door. What door? Well, the one right at the top. And we just got Tower of Tragedy skip. Note, this is not possible yet to actually do, mainly because we don't have a way of escaping Cauldron Keep with Solo Banjo or Solo Kazooie. But the ones in Witchy World and Pterodactyl Land that I showed before, those ones are more likely to be happening if we can find some way to line up the warp properly and get a bit clip off a Jinjo or a Cheeto page. Now, if we do find some way to escape Cauldron Keep with Banjo or Kazooie and do this glitch, I mean, why stop at just getting Tower of Tragedy skip? because in theory, there's a warp straight into the Grunty fight. Skip the Spiral Mountain cutscene. We're going to void out from Mayhem Temple. A wrong warp back to the split up pads, but instead of the pad, it's the warp. And 
straight into the grunty fight. And this actually does work with Solo Kazooie because then it puts you in um, first person mode and you get like a weird hybrid thing, um, hybrid Banjo Kazooie with the um, first person shooting mode. Anyway, I really want to stress these um, Cauldron Keep Warps. Probably not very likely, but warps within other levels, probably more likely. Just keep in mind the level itself has to have a split up pad. Now, in case you're wondering how do we manipulate what warp we're going to go to in the level, um, the answer is sort of playing with both Banjo and Kazooie. Now, I'm just going to give you a little heads up. Uh, that earlier part of the video is the overview of the glitch. Pretty much what happens if there's a room with a split up pad, you can warp up to pretty much any door in that room barring Cauldron Keep because we don't have a way to escape that right now. The video is about to get very technical, so uh, if you're interested in that, keep watching. But if not, you've now got the gist of the glitch and it's probably going to lead to some pretty huge things into it. So when you split up on the split up pad, it stores what map you're on and what warp you came from uh, when you banjo on Kazooie. So if I split up here, it's actually going to store, and it's in these two bytes in hex here, 015D, which is the map Cauldron Keep. And then just before the, those two bytes, it's stored 03, which is the warp that I've come out of. Um, so 03 happens to be the top of the tower there, because um, when I set this up, I warped in from the top of the tower. Now, the absolutely annoying bit is this little thing here seems to move around in memory a bit. I can tell you that it's always near 191 and then something. And if you ever want to find it for yourself and play around with it, uh, you can look at the map, 015D is Cauldron Keep, and then just do a quick RAM search for that specific byte. There we go. A few more. And then there's pretty much only going to be one byte there, 191322, there it is. And then you can see 015D is there. And then that warp 3 is the warp beforehand. Now, something interesting happens if you swap to Kazooie. Here we go. Um, so Kazooie here. We'll set another byte. It's actually not far away. It's just down here. 015D03, which is really good. Uh, but then the fun happens when you get Kazooie into a different map. Or realistically, the easy way to set it up is getting Banjo into a different map. Um, I'll show you out of Pterodactyl land because that's a little bit easier to spot. And we'll see how we warped up to the top of Terry's nest before. So inside the mountain is 116. If I split up, it's going to set a byte to 116. I believe it's that byte there. So it looks good. 01116. And then this number here in front of it, you can manipulate as the warp. So 01 is the warp out of this doorway here. And we'll just see what happens if I pull off the glitch normally with Banjo. So we'll do the same thing. We're just going to grab the Jinjo here. And we're going to try and time a warp out. It's actually kind of hard to time this warp, not going to lie. But in a TAS setting or something, you'd be able to get it pretty easily. Uh, you'll see that it then tries to play a Jinjo Village cutscene. Now, I just skipped through that very slow cutscene there. But once it's done, it's going to warp back to Pterodactyl Land. Void out. And Banjo should come out the door that we came in before we split up, which is that front door to the mountain. Straight in the water. There we go. That's the case. But what if instead of grabbing this Jinjo as Banjo, I did some shenanigans and warped around and warped back to Kazooie. So for example, I could just go into this door here as Banjo. And then what I do is come out of this door. There we go. Now I'm coming into Pterodactyl land with another warp. I actually don't know what number warp this is right now, but we'll find out in a sec. Uh, then what we're going to do is go across to the split up pads over here. And I'll just save a state here. But when I swap back to Kazooie, we're going to see, I think there's a byte somewhere down the bottom right here that will change when I do that. There it is. Uh, do, 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 do. 0116 needs to be somewhere. Sorry, 0112 is there. Um, but what you might notice is that the old byte, 0112, swapped to 10 in front of it. Now, the old warp there was 01 that I was warping to, and now it's just 10. So that's actually different than what it was before. And this is how you manipulate warps. If we were trying to go to warp 10 on the map, um, like in this room, warp 10 is something completely different. But now we've set it up so that we should be able to warp to whatever warp 10 is in this room. So let's just give that a go. Uh, 
All right, so because we, we this time, we're going to grab the uh, Jinjo there, and we're going to try and time our warp out. Again, you'd bit clip this, probably a Taz only. And then it would do the whole Jinjo Village cutscene again. We're back to Pterodactyl land. There we go. Void out, and then we take a different warp to the mountain. Um, so the warp that we ended up getting was actually a warp past all the possible warps in the mountain And if that happens, it's kind of a soft lock. It just shows that but this shows how in theory We could get up to that top warp at Terry's nest. That warp is number five. So we could manipulate it as number five there Now there is this still a bit that I'm missing working out um, See how the warp is 10 here actually in both cases It's gonna warp us to warp 10 for some reason when the Jinjo cutscene starts that warp gets changed to OE, and there doesn't really seem to be a nice way to avoid that. So I've had it sometimes change the warp to OE and sometimes not, depending on different Jinjos and different levels and everything. So it's really, really, really weird. I can't figure it out. But this could even be better if that's the case, because if OE is something useful, then we could even do that without doing the extra manipulation of coming in and out of maps as Banjo. So believe it or not, in making this video, I think I figured out what the issue actually was. Um, so Banjo is coming off of this pad. So when we were doing the glitch before, we were actually leaving Banjo in the map where we were then grabbing the Jinjo from with Kazooie. Because if you pull Kazooie out here and grab that Jinjo in the water, Banjo is still on the same map. And from my understanding, that's actually caused the issue in the first place. So the warp was like 05 here, it was all good, but Banjo was left on the same map. So when I grabbed the Jinjo, that would get overwritten with the OE value that we don't want. Uh, but what I can do is instead of grabbing this Jinjo, I can grab a different one. So to actually set the warp as 05, what you need to do is come out of Ungabunga's cave. And then you need to go to the warp pad as Banjo. So this warp is warp 5. So you go to the warp pad as Banjo, you split up. You'll notice that when I split up, that one changes to a five eventually. Uh, there it goes. And then the only difference that you need in your setup is with Kazooie. Instead of grabbing the Jinjo out in this water, we want to grab the Jinjo in some kind of different room than the base room of Pterodactyland. Now, it turns out that there's exactly one Jinjo in this level that works, and it lives in the Stomping Plains. So we'll just head over there, and then we'll see what happens when we grab that Jinjo. Because we can just warp up there all fine, not a big deal. And then pretty much we will set up in the stomping planes on this Jinjo and we'll do a warp off it. So you pee, save me. And we're gonna warp out. That warp is 05. And I messed up the warp. <laughs> Let's try it again. Yippee, you saved me. That warp is 05. And you can see now that Banjo is not in the same map as where we grab the Jinjo, that warp is actually going to stick as 05 and it's not going to get overwritten with OE. So we let the whole Jinjo cutscene play out. Then goes to the purple Jinjo's house, plays out that little bit. All right, and that warp's still sticking as 05. We come back to chomp, uh, Stomping Plains Void out. And then we're back inside the mountain, but we're at the top warp. So that is essentially how you can get this warp. So yeah, step one would be to split up inside the mountain. Uh, step two would be with Banjo to go in and out of Ungabunga's cave. Step three would be to warp with Banjo back to where Kazooie is. Step four would be to set up Kazooie with this Jinjo do sort of some kind of Taz bit clip set up to clip underneath and grab the Jinjo from underground. Uh, then void out by falling underground after that bit clip. Time the text close so that you're going to hit the void out here right as the Jinjo is pulling you off. Uh, go here to purple Jinjo's house, watch the cutscene, void out, and then you're up the top. Now, just to demonstrate that this bite is actually the thing that's changing it, I'm going to change it to something else like 04, and you'll see the difference in what happens. So if we just try and do this Stomping Plains Warp again, 04. And it's going to warp Kazooie to this warp. And then if we just change it to something past 05, like 06, I don't know what it's going to do, but I'm curious to find out. 06 would be this warp. And you can see that there's a whole bunch. But as soon as it gets too big, like OA may possibly be too big here. 
Um, it's going to get to the point where warps just don't exist in the mountain. Uh, if we go a little bit higher, OC, it'll get to the point where warps don't exist in the mountain at all. And then as soon as that happens, you're just going to be hitting this like soft lock thing. I've actually noticed that in Cauldron Keep, some of the higher warps, like 40 or something, do actually bring you to like just a weird spot on the floor, just like unrelated to a warp. So I'm not sure if that same thing happens on other maps. It does, apparently. So higher warps like 40 would work and they would just bring you to this default spot here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how you can manipulate where the warp's coming from. So yeah, in short, it turns out that if you leave Banjo on the same map where you grab the Jinjo, it's going to override the warp with something else. I've only ever found it to be OE. Whereas if Banjo is on a different map, like if you were to grab the Jinjo out of Stomping Plains instead, the warps are all going to set up correctly and warp you to whatever that last door you came out with Banjo was. In this case, Ungabunga's Cave is door number five. So that's pretty much what there is to this glitch. By taking a few cheeky steps, you can warp to pretty much any door you want in a room with a split up pad. Barring, of course, Cauldron Keep, because there's no way to escape to a level with a Jinjo, because you can't leave the level as Banjo, and there are no Jinjos or Cheeto pages or cutscenes in this level to mess around with. So our next sort of thing on our to-do list for glitch hunting is, I guess, to find how can I escape Cauldron Keep as Solo Banjo or Solo Kazooie? This is going to be really exciting times for TUI glitch hunting and speedrunning because not only do we have this, but we have TSR's new glitch, the whole double backpack thing, which was causing a whole bunch of weird corruptions and crashes and stuff. So I think there's going to be big things in TUI very soon with either of these two glitches.